Hello, welcome to Incognito TV, episode one of Cheap Love. Today, and on every episode of Cheap Love, we're going to be exploring relationships. StarCraft II is a strategy game, and the strategies are largely driven by economic decisions. That is, how am I going to control resources, and how am I going to employ them? Within any economic system, you have the interplay or the relationship between various assets. In StarCraft, those assets would be structures, units, minerals, gas, and how those work together, relate with each other, to enable your strategy. So today on Cheap Love, we're going to set the mood with some romantic literature, which is available on Amazon. If you've got a Kindle, you can go ahead and, and get this title here for free. We're going to be exploring Gianni and Leah, Leah's Seduction One, a Rinaldi romance by Emily Jane Trent. Chapter One. Leah sat on the bottom of the staircase in her tiny New York apartment, though no one was there to see a warm flush washed over her body. She'd die if anyone read her private journal. Yet it was missing. It was likely that a perfect stranger was turning the pages, soaking in her most intimate thoughts. She buried her face in her arms, but couldn't find the strength to weep. The last few weeks had been rough, with her mother's cancer and all. Sylvie Ivers was only in her late forties and such a life-threatening disease had never been something to worry about until it happened. It was all so sudden and emotionally devastating. Sitting in the hospital, looking into her mother's blue eyes, her skin pale and her features so delicately fragile, Leah thought her heart would break. The fear that her mother would die consumed her. It couldn't be true, and so far it wasn't. But the situation remained tentative, so Leah didn't need more stress. She had just returned from Portland, leaving her parents and two sisters behind. At least her mother was at home, resting. The prognosis was somewhat encouraging. One day at a time, Leah reminded herself. She'd always been close to her mother, both parents really. Sylvie's dedicated beauty had been bestowed on Leah's youngest sisters, but had somehow missed her, though she did not, though she did inherit her father's brown eyes. The journal, Leah groaned. Any other woman wouldn't be careless enough to carry such a valued item outside her own apartment. But then any other woman would have a boyfriend, go to parties, and engage in casual sex. None of that fit Leah's personality or lifestyle. No, she had to write everything down in blue ink within the pages of a beige leather journal. It should have been red leather, considering the content. The endless scribbling onto paper helped release the frustration she seemed to have no resolution. Reflecting once more on what she'd had the nerve to write down, Leah sighed heavily. It had to be there. Determined to find the missing item and restore some semblance of order to her life, she scoured every inch of her 500 square foot apartment. Reg residential space was at a premium in Manhattan. Through fashion school, Leah had scraped by, enduring a rented room. It was the only place she had been able to afford. Once she had secured a steady job, finding her own place had been next. The interior design took advantage of the high ceilings more than the narrow width. The blonde wood floors met with a blonde wood staircase that led to a loft bed, not a bedroom, as the space was insufficient. But the mattress, covered with a cozy quilt and nestled on a platform, was just big enough for it. That was comforting. Considering that Leah wouldn't likely be entertaining men, it didn't matter. As a further economy, each stair doubled as a storage compartment. One by one, Leah opened the lids and rifled through the contents. 
no journal. So as we think about Leah's current situation, short on money, long for love, making the best of what she had available in her small apartment, the tragedy all around her. I wonder, I wonder where Leah is going to go in this story. I wonder who she's going to meet. I wonder if she'll find everything she's looking for. So today, we're going to talk about making the most of what you have and how to make that decision, what that decision really means. So we're going to look at what we can produce and if we add something in to our build, like an engineering bay or a factory or more barracks or an expansion what sort of opportunity costs do those decisions have and and what does that mean in, in terms of time and using your resources so we are going to create a custom game and we're going to build three barracks and crank out as many marines as we can and at the 10 minute mark we're going to stop and count and then we're going to make some adjustments to that and we're going to see how many marines we have at the end and then consider what benefit our alteration has toward the efficacy of those marines and we have a new map pool oh my because the season just restarted happy new season Wow, these are old maps. Okay, so let's let load into a two-player map. Akalon Waste would probably be good. Create game. We're gonna just throw in an easy AI so that we don't have to worry about our little experiment getting messed with. And let's see what happens. Three barracks, all marines. We're gonna saturate our mineral line, so that's gonna be 16 SCVs on the minerals. We're not gonna mine gas. And we're just going to see how many Marines we've got at 10 minutes. And then we're going to do some deviations of that. So there isn't going to be a whole lot for me to talk about while this is happening. Um, just think about Leah. Th think about her longings, her desires, her small apartment, using the staircase as both a means of transport and storage. Think about that. Not enough minerals. I'm going to turn up my headphones. Don't mind me. SCV so we're ready. just cranking out our SCVs. Not enough we know minerals. from all the standard Terran builds that we're going to want to build a supply depot at 10. It's a really SCV efficient ready. use. So we're just going to keep that sort of mantra rolling. Ah, you scared me. SCV ready. I can't build here. As soon as we can afford it, we're going to build a barracks. We're going to keep our SCV production constant, SCV ready. as constant as possible. So we want to see how many marines we can build with three barracks by the 10 minute mark. And then we're going to stop. And then we're going to do some deviations. When you're doing these kinds of experiments, they're real basic, but try to be consistent. Like, if, for example, I'm queuing two SCVs in my command center because I'm 
simulating, you know, some priority to SCV production. And for me, with my APM, I find that queuing two is a good balance for making sure that I'm, I'm actually getting those SCVs out. SCV ready. We can afford another barrack, so we're going to build one. We are not taking an orbital command. We just want to see what happens with SCVs, a command center, SCV three ready. barracks. The rear with we're going to go ahead and get this next supply depot. As soon as we can afford our third barracks, we'll build it. SCV ready. And as soon as we're at 16 SCVs, we'll stop SCV production. And we're going to do constant marine production the whole time. SCV ready. If anybody has any theories as to what's going to happen at 10 minutes, how many marines, how many excess minerals, that would be an interesting question when considering opportunity cost. Go, go, go. We're going to build our third barracks because we have enough money. Constant marine production. Constant SCV, SCV production. SCV ready. This better be good. Okay. We need more supply. What's going on? I should have been paying a little more attention Yay. to that, but I was thinking about Leah again. SCV ready. She did not inherit her sister's Over. beauty. But she does Additional have her father's supply brown eyes. Required. Additional yeah. supply depots required. A little supply block, so we're not going to be super precise in our analysis Additional here. supply depots required. We've got more than the, the number of SCVs that we were planning on, so we need to stop doing that. That was a little bit of a habit, rearing its head. Who wants so? Go ahead and build another supply depot. Yeah, whatever. Um, Two. Right. You gonna give me orders? So we can already see that we're more than five minutes in, and we're well saturated, oversaturated, actually, on our mineral line. We've got three barracks. Again, today we're exploring relationships, and especially within StarCraft, of decisions. Decisions about the capital assets, the structures, and how they influence your ability to produce units. Economic questions, questions about relationship. Gangway, coming through. Been waiting on you. So we've got three barracks, a command center, By and the 17 course. Marines, and we're six minutes 52 this into the game. And you can see that our mineral count is really starting to, to go up. We're going to remember this 22 SCV so that in our next variation we can see uh, a consistent go, representation go, go. of our decisions. I wonder who Lee is going to meet. I hope he's a nice guy. And we need to build some more supply depots to keep up with our production. Go ahead. We're now eight minutes in. With 29 Marines. We've got 1,500 minerals. Hmm, seems like we have a lot of unused assets there. Go, go, go! So 
So there are, there's a lot we can add to this between the start of the game and the 10 minute mark to, to make these marines more effective. Or we could boost our production capability. Hmm. You want a piece of me, if we boy. wanted to do a big push at 10. You gonna give me orders? Lots and lots of units. Well, that would suggest more production. If we want to build a similar number of units, but with higher technology or better upgrades, we would think about those kinds of spending decisions. And we're coming up on 10 minutes. All right, there it is. 38 Marines, no upgrades. 2,170 minerals are sitting in the bank not doing anything. Hmm. So that, those 2,100 plus almost 2,200 minerals, that is opportunity. That is the opportunity to make more units, or to make your units better, or to make your economy even stronger. Let's see what's going on with Leah. I have a feeling we're about to learn some things about, about relationships. There was little chance it would be in her narrow galley-like kitchen, but she had to try. Not one inch went unsearched. Yet Leah came up empty-handed. Having already looked in the bathroom, no bigger than an oversized cupboard, she was out of ideas. The electrifying realization that anyone could be reading her journal at that very moment knotted her stomach. Yet she had to get to work. There was a big event she needed to prepare for. The job she'd secured at Barrington's showroom was a lucky break. The reason she'd been considered was because her friend, Kyra Walsh, knew the marketing manager. The position as marketing coordinator was entry level, but Leah intended to climb the ladder to success quickly. Her personal life may be a, a shambles, but her professional life would not be. That was where she excelled, and she knew it. So here we are, we're in the game, we're thinking about Leah, we're thinking about how she's prioritizing her professional life over her personal life, or maybe she's just making excuses, we don't know yet. So here, we've been prioritizing building them Marines, and we want to excel at that. Now in our last analysis, we found that one base with no orbital command and 22 SCVs and three barracks, we could get out 38 Marines by 10 minutes. Let's see if we, let's see if we add to our production. Let's see what that does for us. Maybe we can just overwhelm. How many barracks is that going to end up being? How do we even know? Well, maybe once we've built our queued up two SCVs, queued up Marines in all of our current barracks, maybe if we have just enough money left over for another barracks, let's see how many Marines and how many barracks we have at that 10 minute mark. And let's see if we can take hold of the opportunity that lies inside those 2170 minerals. Let's be inspired by Leah. Yes, I just lost to the very easy AI. On purpose. So again, this time, we're going to do the same, no orbital command, constant SCV production up to 22. Meant to be 16 the first time, but since we made that mistake, we'll adjust our, our experiment. 
This time, however, instead of just sitting on three barracks and constantly pumping out the Marines, we're going to add additional barracks as our economy allows. Okay, so what that means is that we're going to get our, we're going to get our SCVs queued up. We're going to get our barracks queued up, no more than two. And if we have 150 minerals left over, then we're going to build another barracks. And at the end of 10 minutes, we're going to see how many Marines we now have compared to the 38 we had before in our previous experiment. Add our very easy AI. Not a very friendly opponent. Doesn't seem to say good luck, have fun. I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe, maybe we could talk to Blizzard. Maybe we could send them a few good novels on romance and relationships and building connections between people. It's always the little things. It's the little things that matter. So again, we're just going to build up our SCVs, prioritize building those. Keeping an eye on our supply. Not enough minerals. SCV ready. I feel like there was an SCV going the long way around that mineral line there for a second, but maybe I was imagining it. Not I don't know, I'm minerals. pretty distracted by Leah's dilemma at the moment. SCV ready. But I do know that we will need to be building a supply depot at 10 supply. So let's get ready to do that. SCV ready. It's your time. We're not going to be building any gas, so I don't mind blocking, but you can always lower those supply depots anyway. SCV and we're doing a, a little experiment here. An experiment in the relationships between your economic decisions in a StarCraft game. Additional supply depots required. And as soon as we have 150 minerals, after prioritizing SCV production, we're going to build a barracks. Which should be any moment. Bad news. Not enough minerals. Ready. And as soon as we have another 150 minerals, after prioritizing SCV production, we're going to build yet again another barracks. This is cheap love. We're talking about the relationships between SCV economic ready. decisions. We've been inspired by Leah's seduction. We're going to go back to Leah's seduction and see what we can learn from her experience. In the rear with the gear. SCV ready. What's going on? Not enough minerals. And we're going to try to stop at 22 SCVs so that our experiment is SCV consistent. Ready. Not enough minerals. And Not enough we're going to be a little minerals. supply block just like in the last Not game. Not enough minerals. SCV ready. Should have been getting that down at 17. But I keep thinking about Leah and her situation. Go, go, go. Additional supply depots required. SCV ready. Hmm. Now I wonder what's going to happen with this. We had 38 Marines at 10 minutes last time. We had almost 2,800 minerals sitting in the bank. So we're going to try to do a little experiment to see if we can bring that excess resource SCV use ready. down. Make good use of what Armed we've got. Ready. Go ahead, SCV ready. Additional oh, supply depots. We have oh. enough for another barracks, so we're yep. gonna go ahead and do that. You see, there's Marines in production, SCVs in production, and we had access again. Not enough minerals. And we're going to have to start job, pumping up, uh, ramping up the speed that we're getting our supply depots here because we fell a little behind. Not enough minerals. We're getting close to our SCV count from Not our last minerals. experiment. 
Additional supplies. You can see it's a little required. more difficult to keep up constant production. I wonder if that's going to affect our results. Or not. SCB ready. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. I'm going to send two of these SCVs off to their doom just to even up our numbers. And I know that it's going to mess with the the money part of this, but it should still be pretty close because I caught it pretty early on. No. We're going to get some more supply depots. Good job, huh? Not enough minerals. You can see right now we've got five barracks on one base, and we've got 20 marines at six minutes 54. Our SCVs are under attack. Additional supply depots. Not enough minerals. We haven't added more barracks in quite a while, so it feels like this this number of SCVs. By the numbers, boys. Seems to sit pretty well right here with this amount of production, but now we can add enough. Takes a while. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. And stay on top of the supply when you're doing an experiment because you don't want that to mess up your results too much. Not enough minerals. Constant marine production. And we're going to stop at 10 minutes. Already we can see that we're probably going to exceed our last one. And that's a very natural and easy conclusion to make. Not enough minerals. Armed and ready. Make sure that supply depot is not interfering. Not enough minerals. You want a piece of me, boy? Not enough minerals. But you can see yeah, we're spending our minerals much more efficiently. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. We're not banking up anymore like we were in the first one. Okay. Not enough minerals. So we're at nine minutes and eighteen seconds. Not enough minerals. We've got 51 Marines. Not enough minerals. Nine minutes 35. Not enough minerals. Nine forty-six. Not enough minerals. You want a boy? Not enough minerals. You want ten minutes. Okay, so in our first experiment, we just built three barracks, uh, 22 SCVs, no orbital command, and we're, we wanted to see how many Marines we could pump out by 10, okay? So the first time it was 38, and we had 27, almost 2,800 minerals sitting in the bank. This time, we made the decision to employ some capital assets. We're going to build some barracks. That means that you're taking resources you have now and spending them so that you can increase your productivity in the future. Okay. So sometimes that means that you can't build a thing, right? We noticed a couple of times there that uh, my AI assistant was telling me there's not enough resources to do what you want to do. And that is, that is the illustration of time preference. Right now, I'm saying I'm going to defer production until this asset, this barracks, is fully functional. Um, but that will increase my total productive capacity at my goal. My goal is 10. It's one of those situations where, like, let's say, you know, you work in an office, some sort of corporate or, you know, service industry, something like that. And you notice that you do the same sorts of things over and over again 
um, reacting to problems. And then there's some somebody who says, hey, I know that we have all these problems that we need to fix right now, but we really need to think about the root cause. We need to think about how are we going to solve them? And how do we get to a state where we're not having to solve as many of these problems? And sometimes that means taking the risk or deferring, dealing with the current problems so that you can deal with less problems in the future. That's what we've illustrated here with just barracks, SCVs, Marines, and a command center. Okay. We decided to spend our resources now so that our production capabilities were bigger and better in the future. So now at 10 minutes, we have 57 Marines versus the 38 we had before. We have at least six barracks, where we only had three before. Now you'll notice that we have twice as many barracks, but not twice as many Marines. So why is that? Well, every barracks has a certain amount of time it takes for it to be constructed and for it to start pumping out Marines. And obviously those barracks were built in a linear fashion. So each one, its max productive you know, moment in time is going to be further out, right? So for us to get to that doubling of productive capability, that's going to be further out from 10 minutes, okay? So there's going to be diminishing returns on every barracks that we add if we're looking at this 10 minute goal. Okay. Let's check back in with let's check back in with Leah. Let's see where her journey's taking her. Ours has taken us to 57 Marines and only 85 unspent resources. It required building at least six barracks. She's looking for her journal. She's very scared that somebody has found her most intimate thoughts. Very, very scared. It was bet best put to the issue of the lost journal out of her mind. But that wasn't easy. All the way to work, Leah agonized. If only she could remember where she had lost it, but then it wouldn't be lost in that case. Since it had been used for the purpose of jotting down intimate thoughts, she hadn't written her address in it, though she vaguely remembered writing her name inside the front cover. The city was huge, and riding the subway, strolling through the park, and visiting numerous restaurants and coffee shops left too many possibilities as to where it could be. It would be too much to hope that it was in a lost and found somewhere, and would be handed back to her when she reappeared at the establishment. Jostling her leather bag on her lap, Leah hugged it tight. Closing her eyes, she forced her mind away from the loss of the soft leather book, filled with her most precious longings, fantasies, and confessed inadequacies. The desperate search of her apartment had produced nothing. At best, it would turn up, unread. Not much chance of that. At worst, someone who had never met her, and never would, devoured her secrets one line at a time. She could only hope the person would destroy the journal out of decency. Praying that was the case wouldn't help. Whatever was going to happen already had. Leah hadn't seen the journal in weeks. When she had received the emergency call and immediate left for home, she had just packed a few things in a rush. Had it been in her apartment or her leather bag then? Or had it already been lost without her being aware of it? Getting off at her stop, Leah squared her shoulders. She moved to move on and forget about it. There was nothing else to do. Striding toward the showroom and still a bit anxious about making a good impression with her new boss, she dredged up a positive attitude, far from how she felt. slogging on. That's what we're doing right here. We're slogging on. And we're hoping that our most intimate secrets are to expose to our opponent. The decisions that we make, whether we build a thing now or we build a thing later, we don't want our opponent to see that. Because then they'll know our mind. Maybe they'll even know our heart. And that is a vulnerable place to be. 
So we're looking at how our production decisions or our economic decisions uh, affect our outcomes in a game. So our goal right now is 10 minutes to build some army. And right now we're just building marines. Our first experiment was three barracks, one base, 22 SCVs, all working together in harmony. And we were able to create 38 marines by 10 minutes on three barracks and one base. But we had almost 2,800 minerals just sitting in the bank, unused, neglected, longing, longing for love. So we decided to change our strategy to make better use of that opportunity. We decided we were going to increase our raw output of Marines. Again, 10 minutes in, we had 57 Marines, more than six barracks, or at least six barracks. It was almost doubling our, our productive effort. And we only had 85 unspent resources at the end of that experiment. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some new units. Okay. What we're going to do is build one tech lab for every two raw barracks. And we're going to do constant Marauder Marine production. So we're going to do this on one gas. And we're going to see what we can accomplish. Okay. While I'm getting this ready, I want, I want you to think about Leah going to work, anxious about her journal, anxious about her mother's health, wanting nothing more than to find that lost treasure, to secure her, her most intimate thoughts and desires again. Showing up on the job knowing that all she can do is just push through. So we're going to create some interplay in this experiment. We're going to add new units. We're going to add a new resource. And we're going to follow the same pattern as our last, which is that we're going to add barracks and as we're able to afford them, prioritizing SCVs, we're going to add one tech lab for every two raw barracks and see how many marines and marauders we can Not enough produce. minerals. Not enough minerals. Thank you again for tuning into Cheap Love. SCV ready. I'm glad you're here. If you have any experiences with Not enough relationships minerals. and economic interplay, let me know. Not enough we can talk about it. We can discuss it. So we're we're gonna go ahead and build a supply depot at ten. SCV ready. Just as we have in our previous Roger. experiments. We're gonna get SCV our ready. barracks as soon as we can afford it. Not enough minerals. And then a gas geyser as soon as we can afford it. While prioritizing as additional supply depots required. Bad news. Move it. SCV ready. There's our first barracks. As soon as we're around 75 minerals, we're gonna go ahead and get our geyser. What's going on? So far, nothing we've done has interrupted SCV production. Except for maybe that split second with the first supply depot. We're going to build a barracks as soon as we can afford it SCV ready. while prioritizing SCV production. We're going to get three Barrier SCVs into our, into our refinery there and build another SCV barracks. Ready. So we've got two raw barracks. SCV ready. 
Not enough minerals. Our third is going to is going to queue up a tech. Not fight. enough minerals. And then at ten minutes, we're going to see what we've been able to do. SCV ready. How these decisions relate to each other. Can we make the army more effective? Is it going to be less effective? What's going to happen? And we need to pay attention to our supply while we're doing this. Required. I've missed that one almost in every every one of these little experiments, so it should remain pretty accurate. Okay. Additional supply depots required. Big job. You can already see that we have a lot more gas than we need when we're doing this. Go, go, go. So maybe this isn't going to be the most effective use of our resources. SCV ready. Bad news. Supply Not enough minerals. Additional supply. And I was late. So this barracks is going to get its tech lab. And as soon as it can, it's going to start Not producing marauders. Additional supply depots required. Okay, we really need to get ahead of our supply Head here on. just a little Complete. bit based on our ability to produce. We've got 17 total SCVs, if SCV I'm not mistaken. Ready. We're getting close to our 22 that we had before. You want a piece of me, boy? Not enough minerals. Additional supply depots required. Again. Supply depot. Make sure we've got. Armed and ready. Not enough oh, minerals. SCB ready. All of our stuff producing the whole time. Again, we're, we're hitting, we're trying to see what we can produce within Additional 10 minutes and maximize our resources. Doing Additional some little experiments. What's going on? In the rear with the gear. Additional supply depots required. And we're supply blocked pretty bad. By the numbers, boy. You gonna give time to waste them. By the... Okay. We are actually going to cancel SCV production at this point. We have the same that we did in our previous experiments. We're going to add on some barracks. Yeah, whatever. One of those is going to get a tech lab. Seven minutes forty-five in. We've got eighteen marines. Say the word, baby. Two marauders. Go ahead. Who wants some? Gonna add some more barracks on. Let's have a blast. Not enough minerals. Eight minutes twenty-two. Go on. Three marauders, twenty-one grains. Put a tech lab on that guy. Go, go, go! Over queued. Fix that real quick. Kaboom, baby! Okay, we need supply Make depots. Big job, huh? Gotcha. Eight minutes, fifty-six. Add on complete. Gangway. Coming. Not enough minerals. Just say where. Four marauders, twenty-eight it's marines. Get heavy. Additional Not enough minerals. Ah. We're just gonna take one Not SCV. Oh, it's off. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. Nine Not minutes enough forty. Minerals. Not go, enough go, go. minerals. Let's make sure we've Don't got. All of our things selected. Who wants some? 
9.56 and 10 minutes. Okay. Now we've got our results. Maybe a couple of Marines popped out there right when I hit pause. Um, trying to line those up pretty well. But, you know, it can be tricky. So we're looking at the relationship between our decisions about production ca capacity, how to employ our capital assets, and how to make the most of economic relationships within a time, within a period of time. Okay, that's the important part of this. So we're, we've been shooting for any particular army at 10. We started with three barracks on one base. We produced 38 Marines. Uh, then we took the approach of spending money on more barracks as, as the minerals were available um, while prioritizing SCV and Marine production. We got up to six barracks and 38 Marines. So this time, we wanted to see what would happen if we added in some other units to the mix. We wanted to see how spending our money in a different way could change our army composition. And whether that is a, you know, then we can think about whether that's a good decision or we can think about how to create a strategy around those ideas. Okay, so in this experiment, what we got was about six, six, actually seven marauders and about 30 marines. Okay. So. We can see that obviously our total marine count from both of our previous iterations is way lower. But we have six new units, okay? These marauders. Actually, we have seven. We have seven marauders into this mix now. And these are totally unupgraded. So, you know, if you're thinking about, well, is it worth spending some money in this particular situation for these marauders? And, you know, if you're if you're into StarCraft at all, you know how effective Marauders are and in, and in what situations they are. Um, but for those that are totally new to thinking about the game this way, your Marauders, they've got more hit points. Uh, they do great damage against light armor, like Stalkers. They're going to tear Stalkers up. Uh, they're going to allow your Marines to stay alive longer uh, by being, though the Marauders can act as a meat shield to take the damage, they can live longer than the Marine. Uh, the Marines are going to have uh, higher DPS, um, especially if they can just sit and shoot. So when you think about it, you're like, well, I only got 36 units out of this, which is, you know, actually just uh, 37 units, which is only one less than Marines on three barracks, right? Think about that for a moment. You've sacrificed seven marines for seven marauders, and you know, and also you've sacrificed the minerals to build three, four more barracks, four more barracks, okay? Because your goal was to make a better army at 10 minutes. This is a better army at 10 minutes. Now, in the meta, is this army any good at 10 minutes? No, actually it's not. We, we'd want to have medevacs. We, this army with medevacs would be fantastic. Uh, but again, you're going to lose Marines and Marauders uh, by adding in Medivacs. So think about those kinds of relationships. What you're sacrificing now for what you get later, is that uh, a positive thing for my strategy or is it a negative thing toward my strategy? All right, so we've got another 10 minutes and I'm really interested in what's happening with Leah. So we're going to go ahead and catch up with Leah, see where she's at, and maybe something exciting will happen. Something to give her a little hope, a little reassurance. The Beauty and Retail Symposium was the highlight of the following week. The event presented influential business leaders in a panel format. They were to address global issues in the changing dynamics of the fashion world. As the marketing coordinator for Barrington, her attendance was mandatory. Leah's boss expected her to keep an eye on changing trends and make suitable recommendations. It was exactly what she'd been trained for, and the sole purpose of her fashion marketing degree. 
staying on the cutting edge of the rapidly evolving fashion industry and creating effective marketing tech strategies was her talent. Yet studying it in college was different from experiencing it in the real world. Though she'd only been working in her chosen career for a matter of months, Leah had already come to realize that social interaction was more a part of success than she had anticipated. She was more at ease in the confines of an office, though she did adore everything about the fashion world. At five feet six, Leah was too short to be a model. Not that she had the looks to strut down the catwalks displaying the latest designs. And she had no skill in designing, though she admired those who did. Leah's inclination had been toward marketing, which seemed odd for someone who was basically shy. However, in the business world, she came alive. Never short of marketing ideas, she was well suited for her chosen career. But fashion shows and public events unnerved her. Stepping inside the lobby of the Grand Hotel, Leah felt instantly diminished. The luxury and opulence contrasted with the simple dress she wore and made her acutely aware that it was too conservative and that the matching pumps were too casual. Bronze drapes hung every few feet, skimming the polished floor. Looking up, she saw they extended all the way to the high ceiling, past the upper mezzanine. Huge, plush, matching velvet couches lined the walls. The quilted backs were higher than the heads of the guests who sat in them, nearly dwarfing even the taller men. The dark and light brown pattern in the floor was in the shape of endless mazes, making Leah dizzy. She only hoped she wouldn't slip in her dress shoes and go sliding down the center lobby aisle. Gripping the strap of her bag, she searched for a hint as to where the symposium was being held. Distracted, the packet of information about the event slipped from her hand and skidded away. Leah took two quick steps to retrieve it. Before she could reach it, the tip of a man's black leather wingtip shoe caught the corner of the envelope, arresting its slide across the floor. And when she bent down to scoop it up, the man attached to the shoe did too. He reached it first and lifted the packet in his hands as he stood. Then he held out his other hand to her to help her up. The first thing that hit Leo was the scent of his cologne. It wasn't strong like some, but enticing. With her hand in his, Leah stood catching the first glimpse of his face on the way up. His sandy blonde hair was messy, with a few spikes gelled in place. His blue-gray eyes pierced into her, and her pulse sped up. Whoever he was, this guy was sexy as hell. And on that note, my friends, you have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your work day, and tune in again to Cheap Love next Monday on Incognitio TV. Thank you.